I'm Kendra and I'm in the BA test kitchen to have a super secret conversation about Chris Morocco. Once again, we are putting Chris's super taster abilities to the test. This is Gordon Ramsay's scotch egg. I'm challenging Chris to recreate this dish with all of its ingredients in just one day. He will be able to smell the dish, taste it and touch it, but at no point will he be able to see this dish. At the end of the day, we'll come back to see his final creation and I'll be the judge. Oh, oh. Huh. I don't know what that was. For a second, the only words that came to mind were sort of eggy, saucy. Whoa. It's like a large, pretty solid little object here. Is this a dish composed of only these things? Oh wait, no, but we've got something. Ah. Nice to the heads up. So mustardy. It's so dense, but is it like just straight up mustard? Is it mustard that's been turned into some kind of a sauce? There's a real punch and, and like kind of a heat to it. It's giving me like a lot of horseradish, but I don't know if that's just because mustard is always tasted like horseradish and I just never really thought about it deeply enough. I'm smelling meat, like pork, supremely crisp outside here. So what I'm getting is sausage, and it's feeling particularly more towards the end of like the breakfast sausage end of the spectrum. And then it's been breaded and fried. It feels so tightly adhered to the sausage. It's leading to me to believe that it's more of like a three-part dredge, like you, somebody put some flour on there and then an egg wash and then very fine breadcrumbs. And then we have our friend, the egg. Feels like that yolk is still fairly molten in there. This feels like right down the middle, scotch egg, mustard dipping sauce, done. So if there are some other little tweaks and elements kind of happening, they're acting in very subtle ways. Never made a scotch egg. Eaten one maybe once or twice. It's more like something you know as opposed to something you might eat all the time. Okay, so scotch egg. We need eggs, breakfast, sausage. I think we gotta taste some mustards. Dijon mustard, yellow mustard, spicy brown mustard, horseradish, vinegar. I don't think this is the right call, but it's like almost as though there's like miso in there. Somebody's gonna grab these ingredients and then I will be able to get going on my first attempt. So here we are with our ingredients. So we're just tasting different mustards. This is Dijon. It's, it's definitely a lot like brighter and more acidic and a little bit like tinny and metallic than the original. Then this is yellow mustard. It's like very sharp, very acidic. Not really like the original dish at all. I am going with the Dijon, but with some amendments. I don't think it's just straight up mustard. I need to sweeten it up. So I added a little sweetness in the form of maple. I think the horseradish is maybe wrong. I'm adding some vinegar-based hot sauce. A little bit of that should punch up the flavor and bring like a little bit of that warming kind of heat quality that I had in the original. A couple pinches of salt. It ain't bad. Game plan is gotta cook the eggs. Timing of the eggs is key here, okay? We want six and a half minute eggs. Anywhere within six and seven minute, you've got a molten yolk that's just cooked edge to edge, but it hasn't solidified. And we need the egg to hold together enough that we can really manipulate it within that sausage casing. That is essential. So I'm putting them right into ice water for two minutes, just so that they can cool down, because I really want to arrest the cooking process so that the yolk stays molten. These are peeling pretty nice. This is breakfast sausage. So sausage is out of the casing. Get the sausage on there, just like a, a nice clean layer. So I got a little excess, but I can just kind of pinch it off and just kind of work it around to even it out. All right, right? I mean, come on. We've got eggs packaged together with the sausage casing. Now it's time for our dredge. So I've got just plain 
breadcrumb, you know, which has no seasoning. The Italian breadcrumb, in here we've got garlic powder, onion powder, parsley, paprika, black pepper. Let's just be bold. We're gonna use the Italian style seasoned. From a flavor perspective, it just feels so much closer to the original. A few big pinches of salt. Dread Station is here. We've got our three elements. We've got our flour, got our beaten egg, and I've got my seasoned breadcrumb. All right, so we did flour first, and then we did egg. I want this to be fully coated, but I also, you know, I want to drain off all that excess and then into our breadcrumb. Okay, six. Whew. All right, I've got my six scotch eggs ready to be fried, and I'm gonna do a tester, just one of them, into the oil and see how this does. There's like a shallow fry and there's deep fry. This to me feels like something that you're simply deep frying. I want it to be golden. I want it to be crispy around the outside. To me, this is like pretty classic deep fried food, but could be wrong. Like that seems pretty good to me. I'm gonna keep it going for one more minute. Just get it a little bit darker, but then I feel pretty good about that. While the other five scotch eggs are still frying, I wanna cut into this one tester to see how we did and how the cook looks on it. Already loving the color. Loving, you know, just the crispy outer shell. Sausage is cooked. I feel like the egg is maybe perhaps slightly more cooked than I might want it. And I do wonder if the egg is in fact cooking a little bit on that secondary cook more than I might have thought. Let's put it up. Mustard condimento. Scotch eggs with maple Dijon dipping sauce. Here's my first attempt at the dish. I only feel okay about this. All right, I'm gonna give myself some scores. And first up is ingredients, 75. I just feel like there could be a lot of hidden elements in here. I mean, like the sauce, I was really just like guessing and throwing it together at the end there. Technique I feel better about, I wanna say like 85. Appearance, 85, I mean, there could be like some color differentials. Maybe there was a garnish that I missed, but I don't think so. Taste, eggs going a little far over. I mean, maybe we need to do like a five minute cook, five and a half minute on these. Taste I'm thinking is somewhere around like in the 75 range. Honestly, I don't know what I'm missing, but it's something. On this piece of paper, I've got my actual scores. Let's see. No, 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 no. Actual on ingredients is 49, 49. Technique 65, appearance 72, taste 70. Overall score is a 64. Okay, I see how it's gonna be. Next stage, I'm gonna taste the original dish again. As ever, there is a lot to be gleaned from that tasting. And I don't know what it is, so I need to go into it with a super open mind and forget what I think I know about this dish or anything and just figure out what's there. Hmm. Let's go sauce first. I need to explore some other sort of things in the space of like hot mustard products. And, and it could even be like you know, it's like Coleman's English mustard powder plus, you know, some kind of like liquid element. And I think what I mistook for like a horseradishy or kind of chili hot sauce based heat is really just like the quality of the mustard itself. Still getting that little bit of sweetness from the meat. Maybe I was wrong with the sort of breakfast sausage, but could it be like a banger, you know, a chipolata, some kind of like a, a, a North, North Cumberland sausage. There is this quality to the breading. Oh, it's kind of driving me crazy. There's like a sweetness there. I don't know what that sweetness is coming from. I'm having a hard time thinking of anything beyond maple and sugar for sweetness. I'm not getting like fruit. Feeling great, but not good. So let's just call it. It's like a sit down kind of day. <laughs> just get cozy. Nobody's going anywhere. Let's just do some different things for the sake of doing some different things. Hot 
English mustard, fine breadcrumb. We're just gonna do our own. Paprika, dried parsley. All right, slowly revised list. Let's see what comes back. At least take another shot at it, change some things, right? I'm, in theory, there's nowhere to go but up, but is that actually true? I guess we'll find out. Round two, new attitude. General game plan is to do the exact same thing that I did before, but with different ingredients. We've got Cumberland sausages. I was taking some stabs in the dark in terms of English iconic sausages. The mustard, I'm fascinated by. This is Coleman's English mustard. This has a lot of sweetness to it. It's the right consistency, softness of acidity. I'm so happy with that. What a find. If this is the right mustard and this is the right sausage, then, you know, it makes me less inclined to use an Italian seasoned breadcrumb, which I feel like isn't something you probably would find the same way like in England. I'm gonna cook the eggs six minutes because that was a relatively firm yolk in that last one. The eggs are cooking. Let's do our dredge. Unseasoned breadcrumb, onion powder, garlic powder, sweet paprika, because why not? Dried parsley. How about a cheeky little addition of mustard powder? in the friggin' dredge. How do you like them apples? Just a teaspoon just to be cute, cause why not? Salt and pepper. Salty, a little sweet, it's great. So I am delinking this sausage. I feel really good about this sausage. Nice texture. Do we think that's dried parsley? Pork and parsley, just the, the Cumbrian way. We went a little bit shorter on the cook time for the eggs. Six minutes, still holding together majestically. Oh yeah, the sausage is nice to work with. Just wants to kind of come together and like bind to itself more readily. This definitely doesn't feel 28 points worth of different, but it doesn't feel bad. All right, we are breaded, ready to go. Let's get into the oil. Temp is slightly high at 360. I'm gonna jack up the heat just while I drop these in because it's gonna cool that oil down so quickly. Let's go check it at four minutes. These are a little bit more delicate, so I wanna be careful even agitating them in the pot. I'm gonna give it a good minute before I start poking at them. Looking good. They held together nicely. Color's good. Out of the fryer and onto the counter, as they say. I'm using that mustard straight up. Ooh, that is a nice little cook there. This is my second attempt at the dish. Let's talk scores. Yeah. Ingredients, if my actual was a 49, let's say like I eked out a 70. Technique, let's say like, again, maybe we're at a 70 here. Appearance, 75. I don't know, you guys freak me out with the appearance. I thought that was the one thing I had locked and then you really cut me down. Taste, we'll see about with the judge. Hi. Hello. Are you excited? I'm mostly scared. Okay. I'm really excited to present to you today Gordon Ramsay's Scotch Egg. <clears throat> right off the bat, what can you tell me? There's something in the sausage. Mm -hmm. There's in fact two things in the sausage that aren't in yours. What is that though? It's black pudding. Oh. Okay, and while you're massaging your head, I will just slide in there that the second thing is grated apple. Are you we well? We talked a lot about <laughs> sweetness. There's like a sweetness there. I don't know what that sweetness is coming from. I'm not getting like fruit. I'm not getting like fruit. Because you didn't put these extra fun flavory things in the sausage, you sought that flavor elsewhere by adding it to your Breadcrumb. Breading. But this is just panko. Breadcrumb. It's panko? It's, look at that! For a six minute egg and fried in a deep fry for slightly less time, mm. this is a five minute egg fried in a shallow fry for five slightly minutes. more time. Five minute is dangerous. I know, but it goes for 12 in the shallow fry. Okay, fair. So you need to sort of start from a place of being less cooked. But I would be very afraid to peel a five minute egg. We're gonna talk scoring. 
okay. we're gonna start with ingredients. Great. As you know, you added a bunch to the outside that wasn't there and you missed two things inside. Yeah, yeah. And for this reason, you get 75. That's fine. That's totally you fine. You just, it's so many spices in here. I know. That's the hard part. I know, I know. Yeah. Technique, there was timing differences, but obviously, ultimately, it came out to a similar place. Shallow fry versus deep fry is the only real sticky difference. Yep. You gave yourself a 70. I'm giving you an 82. Wow. Okay. Appearance. They're really close other than the breadcrumb in large part because I think your added spices created this like darkness bit that the black pudding actually did here. Mm -hmm. So you did sort of inadvertently end up at a visual likeness. I'm giving you 90. I feel that you deserve to know that you <laughs> were, you're close. For taste, we have to taste. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty nice, Chris. That's nice. We got, I mean, we got to a good place with it. Mm. Nothing sticks out. It's just savory. Mm -hmm. yeah. I feel like it's a similar vibe in my mind with his, yeah. but, but let's see. Okay. Much more set, honestly. It's that cook time. It's the 12 minutes. It's the 12. 12 minutes yeah, is so Look at so like long. the white, you know? Yeah. Oh, I hope I hear bite. Hmm. You taste just the sausage bit, and you're like, there's a sweetness there. Look, I can see. Oh, I know, that little like, shred. That's like a grated apple bit. Yep, for sure. I think the black pudding kind of has its own sweetness and it has its own spice mm -hmm. quality to mm -hmm. it. And it's almost like you're using black pudding to season the sausage. Exactly, yeah. Which is very antithetical as a developer to using sausage in the first place. Totally. I'd give myself like an 80 here. That's exactly what I think you get. We're giving you an 82. B minus, I'll take it. I think you did great. Thanks. These are delightful. It's actually really fun. It's such like a showstopper of yes, a thing. Yes, totally. I do think you should feel proud of yourself mm -hmm. for today. I know that it was challenging. I know that you had doubts. I yeah. know that you almost added miso to mustard. Yes. It's like almost as though there's like miso in there. That's Indeed. a wild ride, but you came out on top. Mm -hmm. I really think so. Great. Thank you. Thank you for doing this. I appreciate <laughs> of it. Of course. Anytime. This is the 40th episode of Reverse Engineering and how fitting that it was a Gordon Ramsay recipe, right? Because the first recipe we ever did on Reverse Engineering was Gordon's Beef Wellington. Another one down, but fair play to you, Gordon. Didn't see the apple or the black pudding coming. Dang, you know, I feel like he's gotten the last word. Got nothing to tell you about scotch eggs other than um, make them, eat them, enjoy them. Don't don't like, you know, don't let them get you down. It should be fun.